move into the Word of God. Acts chapter 9, verse 1 through 7, and we ask God's blessings over the Word of God this morning. And uh, we want to talk from this subject this morning. When God gets our attention, or another way we can ask, what does God have to do to get our attention? Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come. We thank you again for the opportunity to share in the taught word and the preached word of God. God, we thank you for the time that we had together this week that you could speak to my heart and speak to my soul. And God, as I come today, I do not take my assignment lightly, but God, I come today taking my assignment with all reverence to your name, God. And God, giving you all of the praise. And even though, God, you have poured into our hearts and our minds, I still stand available today, God, to be used by you. Even now, God, as I stand before you and before the people of God, I ask you to continue to pour into me in order that I might pour into your people. Open up Acts chapter 9 in our hearts and in our spirits and let all of us know that every now and then you try to get our attention in order that we might be redirected in our lives. Thank you, God. Give us preaching and teaching power. In Jesus' name we pray. And at the end of the day, God, we just want to hear you say, well done. It's our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Acts chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. Acts chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. Acts chapter 9, beginning at verse 1, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. We find these words written in Acts chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. The text reads this way. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. He went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gourd. So he trembling and, aston and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were open, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. And the people of God said, Amen. I want to talk from this subject this morning, when God gets our attention, or what does God have to do 
to get our attention. I did not give this to the um, people who keep us on live stream, but also I would like for you to notice verse 15 as well. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel. I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. When God gets our attention. I believe that every now and then that God has to do something to shake us up in order to get our attention. I believe that all of these events that are happening in our life is not an accident that all of these things are going on. I don't believe that COVID-19 virus is an accident, and I don't believe it is happening at the same time that there is protest in the street because we have lost another black male to police brutality. I don't, I don't believe that, that all of these things are by accident, but I just truly believe that God is trying to get our attention. And I don't believe that God is just trying to get the world's attention, but I believe that God is trying to get the church's attention as well. Because when you look back in these very sh few short months, how life has changed for all of us and how everything that we go to do is different. Amen. Everything that we look at has been changed. Is God trying to get our attention? One moment we were in the church, the next moment the churches was closed, one moment we had the freedom to go wherever we wanted to go. And then the next moment we had to start practicing social distance. One moment, um, everything was normal. And then all of a sudden things changed. And in the midst of all of this that's going on, and even people losing their lives. And one thing that really got my attention, Joanne, is that with the COVID-19, it affect people of color more than any other race of people. And at the same time, we are dealing with police brutality, where you can see it all over the world, of a white officer with his knee on the neck of a black man who pleading that I need to get up so I can breathe. The last thing he said, was he called for his mama. I don't believe that these things are just by accident. I believe that God is trying to get our attention. And let me say this and I'm gonna move on to the text. It's good to have peaceful protests. It's good. I don't agree with the violence part, but even at the violence part, I, I wonder sometimes, were people at a breaking point because so many things were happening in their lives with people at a breaking point. I don't condone the violence, but when I looked at it, I said, what were people at a breaking point because so many things uh, were going on? The other thing I'm gonna say before I move into my text this morning, it, it, the, the protests are, are great, but the thing that I want us to do is march to the polls November and vote. Amen. That, that's, where, that's where the real change will happen at. And I say this, and I say this, and black America can get mad at me if they want to. But in the last election, if we black people would have got up off of ourselves and went to the polls and voted, then we wouldn't have who we got in the White House right now. Amen. So black people, we got to do more than just get in the streets and protest. So it's God, and all of this is God trying to, to get uh, our attention. I, I wonder, I've been thinking about this all week, wh what is God uh, saying to us? In, in the church of the living God, uh, what is God saying to us? Had we got to the place 
um, that we were just going through the formality of worship and really were not worshiping God. Had we got to the place, we were just coming to, to the building and our minds were not on God. Was God still saying that I'm looking for worshipers who will worship me in spirit and in truth? A amen. I want to look this morning when we, and, and a few things before I get to Saul, but, but I believe in my heart that God always wants the best for us. Everybody, I believe that God wants the best for us. And I believe because God desires the best for us, he is committed to showing us how to follow his specific plan for our lives because God desires the best for us. If you don't think God desires the best for you, uh, what happened when he gave the best that he had? His son, Jesus Christ. So he is committed to showing us how to follow the specific plan that, that God has designed for our lives. All of us, God has designed a specific plan for our lives. Your plan may not look like my plan, and my plan may not look like your plan. But if you follow God's specific plan for your life, if you do what God has designed for you to do in your life, then God is committed to showing you how to follow his specific plan. But every now and then, God has to get our attention. God wants us to listen for his voice. And it won't by accident, a few weeks ago, we taught on Wednesday nights about how to hear the voice of God. Because God wants us to listen for his voice. And in order to hear what he wants us to do and how he wants us to do it. A amen. That's, that's key right there because so many times, and, and I'm going to talk about the church for a little while, so many times in the church, we want to do it our way and have forgotten about the ways of God. Can I talk a little while this morning? Amen. As long as we've done the, the way I want it done, the, and a lot of us church folk, amen, that have, forget, have forgotten how to do it God's way. It's God trying to get our attention with so many things going on in the world, so many changes in just a short period of time. It's God trying to, to get our attention. I, I, I told you um, a few weeks ago, look at um, the news long enough to stay informed, but don't look at it too long because it'll make you depressed. A amen. Just long enough to stay informed. And, and I, the other day, I was watching, and I believe that God is trying to get our attention, that any time the person in the White House, I won't even call his name today, are thinking of using the military against its own citizens, something is wrong somewhere. Amen. Any time that you use tear gas and rubber bullets to make a pathway to you to go to the church and hold the Bible upside down, amen, amen, that something that is wrong somewhere. I, I could see if you would have had it the right way, but you're going to hold it upside down. God that is trying to get our attention. And the other day, it really got on my nerve when he was making a speech and talk about, he said, Mr. Floyd is probably saying it's a good day. Something is wrong somewhere. A amen. Something is wrong somewhere. In the Acts chapter 9, let me get to Acts chapter 9, we meet a, a man there by the name of Saul. At this time, his name was Saul. And, and later on, the same man would become Paul. It don't matter where you start at. It matters where you end up at. He started out um, as Saul, and when you look at Saul's life, he was a persecutor of the church. Um, he persecuted Christians, and at the time of our text, he's on his way to persecute the church of the living God. It's in verse 1. It's then Saul breathing out threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. He went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, in other way, anybody who had anything to do with Jesus, he would bring them back to Jerusalem 
in order to take their lives. Can I add one more thing? You got to be careful how you mess with a child of God. You, you got to be careful how you deal with a Christian. So he was on his way. He was doing what he thought was right. But all of a sudden, between him getting his orders from the high priest, he met another man by the name of Jesus Christ. And I tell you, whenever Jesus comes into your life, it's going, it, a change is going to happen. But, but notice in the text, first of all, he had to get Saul's attention. He had to get his attention. And after Jesus gets his attention, but first of all, he had to get his attention. Notice what happens uh, to Saul in the verse 3. The text says, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shined around him from heaven. The Bible said, then he fell to the ground. And after falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul responds back. See, anytime heaven get in contact with you, you got to respond back. Saul responds back and said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goat. So he trembling and astonished said, And after God gets his attention, Saul asks a powerful question. It's in verse 6. Lord, what do you want me to do? No, notice he didn't say what I want to do, but what do you want me to do? Would not the church be a better place today if all of us would ask that same question? Lord, what do you want me to do? And, and then God, get, after he gets his attention, he tells him to go into the city and you will be told what to do. Verse 7 describes his condition, condition after God gets his attention. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Amen. What happens in between time? The time he leaves in order to take the lives of Christians. What, what happened between the, verse 1 and the time he gets to verse 7? Help me somebody. And having no sight. He leaves um, in verse 1 with sight. But by the time he gets to verse 7, he is a blind man. Amen. Blind, and not only blind one day, but he was three days without sight. Did not have anything to eat or drink. Because now God has his attention. Preach her predictions of about five more minutes here. So after Jesus gets his attention, Saul asks a powerful question that we should ask ourselves on a daily basis. Lord, what will thou have me to do? But how did God get Saul's attention? How, how, what methods did God use in order to get Saul's attention? Because God has some unusual ways of getting our attention. The first thing that, that God used in order to get Saul's attention. I, I, I feel better since I'm here now. Hey, man, I, I, I got to admit, I, I haven't been feeling well the um, last two days, but I've got to admit, I feel better now. Hey, man, hey, man. No, notice what, how he gets Saul's attention. He gets Saul's attention by disrupting Saul's plans. Hey, hey, Amen. See, sometimes God has to disrupt your plans in order to get his plan. Amen. So here, here it is. See, he was one of the quickest ways uh, that God gets our attention uh, is by disruptions. 
Perhaps we have made our plans uh, and we make plans, uh, but sometimes our plans uh, are not God's plans uh, for our lives. And, and it, 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 it's just not God's plan. And sometimes we got the ability to think in our mind that this is God's plan uh, for my life. When in actuality, it is not God's plan. Can, can I preach about five more minutes, Debbie? Amen. So every now and then, uh, God that uh, has to disrupt your plans in order to put his plans in place. I, I, I wonder during all of this COVID-19 that, that, that the plans that we had, that, that God had to disrupt them in order for us to focus on his plan. Amen. He had to get our attention. Notice that if the things we want to do are different from what God wants to do, then God will disrupt our plans. Amen. I, I want to know, uh, those of you who are here, to, here with me this morning, have you ever had God to disrupt your plans? Uh, you, you had your little plans all packaged up. Uh, you had your little plans all in place. Uh, you were happy about your little plans. Uh, and all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, here comes God, and God uh, disrupts your plans. Saul's plans uh, were to destroy the church. But God's plan was different from what Saul wanted to do. Saul was going into the city to destroy the church, to destroy the Christian. But when Jesus got a hold of his plan, then God had changed him around. So, so he disrupts Saul's plans. We, we must abandon our will and take on the, the will of God. I am tired, I am sick and tired, can I preach a little while this morning, of people in the church who wants their will to be done, and we've forgotten all about the will of God. But let me tell you something, every now and then, God will disrupt your plan. I'm almost finished. He, he, we must abandon our will and take on the, the will of God. I made God a promise, Corbin Stokes, last week, I said, God, if you keep me in my right mind, if you keep me in good health, if you keep me here at this sanctuary, no longer will we operate on our plan, but we're going to operate on the plan of God. Amen. And the plan of God is written in the word of God. Amen. So here, every now and then, God will disrupt our plan. So look at, well, look at what he did um, to Saul. See, we must make sure that the things we want to do are in line with the things that God wants us to do. And sometimes uh, what we want to do, it don't line up with what God wants to do. Sometimes uh, the things we want done uh, don't even line up with the word of God. Amen. But God has a way of disrupting our plans uh, and then putting his plan in place. So the first thing God do, uh, I'm almost finished, I'm almost finished, but the first thing God would do, he would disrupt your plan. I'm going to ask again, have you ever had God uh, to disrupt your plan? Amen. Uh, let me see your hands again. Amen. Have you ever had God uh, to take your little plan uh, and, and he just don't pull it apart? Uh, uh, God takes your little plan uh, and put it in the trash can of life uh, and tell you now you tried my plan. Uh, and when you try the plan of God, uh, blessings will begin to flow in your life. And you're going to turn around and say, every time I turn around, uh, the Lord uh, is blessed. Blessing me. So sometimes, sometimes God will disrupt your plans. Number two, how did he disrupt Saul's plan? How did he get his attention? Sometimes God uses extreme circumstances. Whoo! Amen. He uses extreme circumstances. See, sometimes God will use extreme measures and situations to get our attention. The circumstances are so unusual that we cannot stop, cannot help, but to stop and listen. Notice in the text, the Bible say, a light shined from heaven. That's what the text say, a light shined from heaven. And notice what it says, it shined around Saul. Now Saul, when you read this, there were other people with him. 
He had his entourage with him. But God, from heaven, put the spotlight on Saul. Help me somebody. Have you ever had God to put the spotlight on you? He, it, the light shine from heaven. Notice what happens uh, in these extreme circumstances. King James Version say he got knocked down. In the New King James Version, he say he fell to the ground. Every now and then, the God that we love, every now and then, the compassionate God, every now and then, the God that will give you the best. Can I preach a little while? Every now and then, God will knock you on the, your rear end. He will take you down a notch because sometimes we think we can get too high for God. But every now and then, hey, help me somebody, God will knock us down. He will use an extreme circumstance. Have you ever had God to knock you down? Amen. You thought it was all about you. You were the potato chips, the bag, the dip the salt on the chips. You thought you were everything. Hey, man, you thought you had it going on. But here comes God with his, un, with his extreme circumstances and had to take you down a notch. Come on and talk back to him. Hey, man, you were riding high. Hey, man, everything was going your way. But every now and then, God has a way that's mighty sweet God will bring you down. And then a lot of us in the church, I'm almost finished, I'm almost finished. A lot of us who say we are Christian, as soon as we get knocked down, the first thing we'll do is put it on the devil. Amen. Don't get the devil all that credit. Amen. Because sometimes, because God loves you, and sometimes because God has the best for you, sometimes God will knock you down in order that God might get your attention. He uses extreme circumstances. For black America, can I talk to black America for a while? Is God trying to get our attention? Notice COVID-19 affect people of color more than any other race. Notice inside the people of color, notice it's the black male in the midst of the COVID-19 that it affect more than anybody else. Notice, hey, hey man, I'm almost finished. Notice that the, that the police officers and brutality is against the black males. It's gone, and don't forget, the black female that lost her life in her own house, minding her own business, taking care of her own child, and then had the nerve for a police officer to take her life. Something is wrong somewhere. It's God trying to get our attention. I learned something else that now people want to go back and pull up Mr. Floyd's background. It don't matter what your background is. You are still a human being. I don't care what you've done in life. You don't deserve to lay on the black asphalt in the heat with a white officer's knee on your neck and you crying to get breath and you die. I don't care what your background might be because the truth be told, if a whole lot of us would check our backgrounds, a, a whole lot of us ought to have been locked up a long time ago. But it don't matter about your background. It matters about Jesus coming into your life. Because here is Saul. Saul's background was to take the lives of Christians. But here, God used him. You ever know something about the Bible? That God always used people with some type of background. Amen. God don't go looking for perfect people. Nobody in the Bible was perfect. Peter was a cusser. Not only would Peter cuss you out, but Peter would draw his knife on you, and Peter would cut you. Amen. But God did what? Used him. Peter could use some curse words. Amen. 
but God, what? Use him. A amen. Some of you know some Peters in your life. A amen. He will take out his knife. Um, he, will, he will cut you. If you look at every individual in the Bible, there was something or some imperfection in their lives, uh, but God used them. Don't you tell me who God can use. Amen. God can use ever who he pleased. That's so, so sometimes. Uh, then, then, number, then, number, then number three, then I'm going before I get happy. Number three, sometimes uh, God uses loss to get our attention. Loss, L-O-S-S. -S. Sometimes God will cause us to lose some things in order to get our attention. What did Saul lose? I heard somebody say, what did he lose? He lost his eyesight for three days. Loss, that's an extreme loss. God wanted to get his attention so bad, he takes his eyesight from him for three days. Sometimes, now notice something that's to happen in this text. I just saw that this, this morning. Hey, notice something else. While he was in the midst of loss, and while he, was lo he lost his sight, it was in loss that God put things in perspective for Paul. A amen. You can say what you want. It was in the, his loss that he put the perspective of light in the right place. Can, can, I, can I preach this thing this morning? Amen. I don't need nobody to tell me this morning. I'm preaching to my own. I'm preaching. I'm making me happy this morning. In, in his loss, God put Paul's life in the right perspective. Sometimes you don't think right until you begin to lose some stuff in your life. And when you begin to lose some stuff, then that's when the, your perspective of life change. Amen. In the midst of this COVID-19, some things we thought were so important, we find out now that it's not really that important. Amen. Some, a, amen. Come on and talk back. Some, some things that we just took for granted, we find out now that life was more than just clothes. Life was more than just a new house. Life was more than just a new car. But every now and then, I just want to hug my brothers and sisters and say, God is good, and God is good in and out. And every now and then, I want to be right the saints of God. Amen. No matter what mature things I have, I want to be around the saints of God. Amen. Excuse me for getting excited here. So he gets up. Paul Saul's attention in the midst of loss. When God gets our attention through loss, he has a way of getting our attention by breaking through the fog of our own agendas and our own delusions and personal agendas and plan on opening our eyes once he gets your life in the right perspective. Why did God let you lose that job? Amen. Why did God allow you to lose some stuff you had been hanging on to? Why did God allow loss to come into your life? Why did God, in his permissive will, allow you to lose some stuff? And not only lose some stuff, but why did God allow you to lose some excess baggage by the name of friends that you had in your life. A amen. Come on, talk back to me. Amen. He allows you to lose some things. So Saul loses his eyesight. For three days, he loses his eyesight. For three days, he was without sight. Three days, he didn't have anything to eat or to drink, but he asked a powerful question. Lord, what do you want me to do? I'm finished now. What do you want me to do? Well, I know too much of the story to finish right there. I asked the question. Now, it was the Lord who, not, who, who caused him to lose his eyesight. It was the Lord who allowed the light to shine around him. I always wondered, 
when he asked him, Lord, what do you want me to do? All God said, I want you to go into the city, and there you'll be told what to do. Why didn't God just tell him right there? And I already got you down. <laughs> you already have lost. Why didn't God tell him right then what I want you to do? But notice God does an unusual thing. He said, there's a disciple by the name of Ananias. Go to him because God has shown Ananias in a vision what you ought to do. Amen. So God, let me, let me tell you the rest of the story, then I'm going, I'm, I'm through preaching. So God had to first work on Ananias. Because Ananias said, you want me to put my hands on this dude called Saul? And you know, God, what kind of reputation he got? But what Ananias failed to recognize, when God puts his hands on you, he'll turn your life around. It's in the verse 15. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine. How do you go from a persecutor to a chosen vessel? How do you move from somebody who is destroying the church to now one who would be for the church because God got his attention. And then God tells Saul, I've got your attention now, but buddy, I got to tell you something that I will show you now how many things you got to suffer for my name's sake. Don't you think for one minute that this Christian walk is going to, to be easy. Ananias followed God, and the end of the story, and I'm going. He went into the way, into the house, laid his hands on him, and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Help me, somebody. Not only am I going to go, is God going to give you your sight back? but he's going to feel it. Not only will he give back to you what he's taken from you, but he's going to feel you. I, I need somebody to suck the amen. Not, not only will he take your sight, but God is getting ready to give you a better sight back. Your other sight was messed up, but the sight that God is getting ready to give you it's going to be a better sight, amen. You're going to be able to see clear now. You're going to be able to see better now. And notice what he said. He appeared to him on the road, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with, hey, the Holy Ghost, amen. Amen. That's what I'm going to fill you with. I'm going to fill you with the Holy Ghost because you're going to need the Holy Ghost in order to keep on keeping on. You're going to need the Holy Ghost to sing in rough time. You're going to need the Holy Ghost to preach in rough time. You're going to need the Holy Ghost that in the midst of a COVID-19, you're going to still say that God is my Jehovah Jireh. You're going to need the Holy Ghost to be able to stand in the midst of men losing their lives and say God will make a way somehow. You're going to need the Holy Ghost to be able to still give God praise in the midst of all that is going on. You're going to need the Holy Ghost in order to make it in life. He fills him with the Holy Ghost. Get ready to sing choir. And then the Bible says immediately that fell from his eyes something like scale. I once was blind but now I see. And the Bible says he received it his sight, he was baptized, got him something to eat, got his strength back, he helped me somebody, and start serving the Lord. When God gets your attention, has God got your attention in all of this? Can you ask yourself today, Lord, what would thou have me to do? God got my attention. Because I'm, I'm concerned. I'm concerned. 
that when we come back into the physical building, we want to go back to our old ways. No. God is getting our attention to say, you got to do things a better way. You got to do things my way. Does God have your attention? When God brought about loss in your life, did he get your attention? Are you listening to what he's saying? Or are you still being hard-headed? You, that's, that's why our parents used to call us. Y'all, some of y'all are too, too young to remember that. But how many of you remember when mama and dad used to call you hard-headed? And sometimes, and I know we can't do it in the day and time, we're living in social service, it gets you. But sometimes mom and daddy would lay on a lick beside you in order to get your attention. Sometimes they'll put that strap on your behind in order to get your attention. Has God got your attention? Are you listening to him? God got a plan for you. You are important to God. But God needs your attention. Things are happening. It's trying to get our attention. Things are happening not by accident. But God is trying to get our attention. What time is it? Oh, it's 11.15. Had we gotten off course? And now God is allowing all this to happen so that he can get us back on the plan that he has for our lives, the plan that he has for our churches, the plan that he has for our families. What is God saying in these times that we are living in? Things are happening that we never thought would happen in our lifetime. But what is God doing? Amen. You got to wear a mask. Those who wear glass, you're trying to wear a mask and you're breathing this fogging up your glasses. And everybody you meet, the first thing you do is want to make sure you're six feet from because you don't know who got what. What is God saying to us? What is God speaking to our heart? Because remember, he loves us so much that he has a plan for our life. Amen. Amen. As I conclude the sermon this morning, I want to speak to all of us. We need to ask ourselves the question. Lord, what would thou have me to do? And then when God speaks to you, and when God takes your little plan and throw it away and put his plan in your life, and we ought to be able to say, not my will, but 
let thine will be done. If there's one today who knows not Christ, you want to receive Christ in your life. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Then call some whatever church you desire to go to and learn about the things of God. Amen.